All toolpaths now have the ability to allow the tool center to go outside the block when the toolpath is being created. Previously to PowerMill 2010, only roughing toolpaths had this option. Let's take a look at an example to see how this works in practice. So as click on the image in the rolling demonstration to load in the example part. If we go to our Explorer, Powerman Explorer, we have two batch toolpaths. The first toolpath is uh, limiting the tool center to the block edge. So if we look at the settings for that toolpath, on our new style strategy form, if we go to the limits page, we can see there's an option here for block limiting. And there are two choices, allow the tool center outside the block and limit the tool center to the block. So we're going to choose the second option to limit the tool center to the block and then calculate. If we just close our strategy form for a second and we look down Z, straight away we can see the effect of that option to limit the center of the tool to the block edge. If I undraw the part for a second, you can see that as soon as the tool center hits the edge of the block, it is trimmed back to prevent the tool from going outside. So this happens in several places around the part as we're machining the convex fillet. Let's take a look at the second option. So it's an identical toolpath with identical parameters, but this time we're going to allow the tool center to go outside the block and then calculate. And here we can see there's a dramatic difference between the two toolpaths. This time the toolpath is complete without any fragmentation and if we attach the tool here we can see the center of the tool is way outside our block edge. This change in the way tool paths are trimmed relative to the block means that Parmel's behavior is now more consistent across the board for both roughing and finishing tool paths, meaning it will be less confusing for a new user.